I'm going to talk um, about two different aspects that we touched on last time. Um, I just barely, when we talked about formatting, barely touched on the topic of having report templates and then um, also wanted to have a longer discussion on customizing the template, the Webby report template with the CSS that's available. So that's what we're going to talk about in this session. Um, I shared with you, I'm going to spend a few moments before we dive into the CSS um, about uh, this template here that I shared with you that uh, Presbyterian Health um, has created. So uh, earlier it was mentioned uh, that, um, I don't remember the gal's name over here, but how she used shared elements. Jaina? Um, used as shared elements to add to their reports. Um, this is a different approach in that they created one web intelligence report um, that's kind of pre-set up for you, and you could then run your query and uh, develop your tables and charts within that one report. So using this same report always as your starting point. Uh, so this was set up one time, and then some upkeep um, was done to it, and um, they use it extensively. We were involved with a migration project with them uh, a few years back, and um, I would say a good 80% of their reports used this template. So it was really uh, handy. It was nice just to see the consistency with the reports. They were beautiful. <laughs> you knew where to look for stuff, um, and it had a lot of uh, information that users often ask for, and sometimes it's tacked on uh, or added later on, but having this template set up ahead of time really gave them the ability to create great looking reports, but um, also meet those needs on a consistent basis. So this was the cover page that they used, and then each one of these where it says enter owner name in report owner variable, they had already created a, several variables. So there were probably 10 to 12, maybe 15 variables within this report that all you had to do is go in there and add some information to it. And then it's populated in the report in all the tabs of the report. And as you're going to see, there's multiple tabs in this report. They populate them once, and then any extra tabs that were not needed for that particular uh, report could be deleted when they weren't needed. Um, and you'll see what I mean about that in a moment. So this tab, <coughs> they set up their goals and objectives for the report, the purpose of the report. Um, we really liked this, this environment and data source. Oftentimes, um, people will ask, well, is this coming from the dev environment or the production environment? Um, is it coming from this system? And in their minds, the users of this report, they know, OK, I know the data that's coming from that report is missing some information, or there's some clue to them that is really helpful if they know where that information is coming from. Not in every environment, but uh, I've seen it come up in different scenarios over the years. So that was really helpful to give them that information of where the information is coming from in this report. Uh, the criteria and notes, any um, things that we want you to be aware of ahead of time as you're using this report. And then this next tab was on formulas and definitions. So this was really great, especially in the migration process when we were faced with um, formulas 
that didn't migrate well and that the results weren't matching, we could go back really easily here and see what they were trying to achieve and what the formulas they were using here. So that was really handy to be able to have that information just laid out there for us. It was very helpful. And then this particular tab they use just for updating a change log for this particular template and what they were using it for with this note that they should delete it, <laughs> uh, that tab when they were done building their new report. And then they had several tabs set up. They had one, this is for a horizontal table. So when you ran your report, all you had to do is drop your variables in here in the middle or on the end. In this particular case, they wanted their totals on the left-hand side. So they set up their summary cells to be like that. And the formatting is already there for you. The colors, the font, the size of the font, the justification of the font, everything was already set up. So there was very little to do on the report. Um, so obviously it made building the reports much faster because the formatting work was done for you. And then here's a vertical table that they had set up. They liked having, even on their vertical tables, to have the totals at the top right underneath the headers rather than at the end of the table, which might be, you know, 65 pages down. So I liked that. Oops. Uh, then they had another tab set up for cross tab and a chart template as well. So anything that they didn't use, uh, they could delete that tab and the report's done, ready to go. Um, so I took the time to prepare to see how intense it was um, to create a template like that. So I wanted to show you what that looks like. Well, here's a report template that I created, fairly similar to theirs. Um, and also I wanted to mention that if anybody wants a copy of that PDF um, that Presbyterian has, or I could also export this as PDF, um, they did say we could distribute that. So if anybody wants a copy of that, just let us know and we could provide that. So this is what their actual template looked like with all these various tabs along the bottom. And then if I go into design mode, you'll see the variables that I've set up ahead of time. So a user would just have to go in here and add the information that they want and that information would be populated on each of the tabs then for them. So it gives the formatting of the report. Oh, this was another helpful thing um, that I just wanted to talk about a little bit. Let me come back here to show this. Um, here on their vertical table, you see where it says no filter on V table? Um, a lot of times it is not obvious whether there's been a report filter um, applied on that. And um, you could show the users where to go to look for that. But this was, I thought, a very handy way to be able to show them right away. These are the filters that have been applied on the report. And so I wanted to show one of the ways that you could get that information. This is using the report filter summary function, which would give all the filters on every report tab. And by using some functions in here, I use the position function. So show me where it finds the vertical table information. And then once I know that, the position, I can use the substring function to extract that and find out what the filter was. 
And so uh, I think in this one, or let's see if I applied it here. So this one has a, where the report author is null. So just to show you that it pulled up that filter on there. And then further, I added an if statement on there here that if it doesn't find the filter on there, that it puts the words no filter, no report filters, so that they knew that going into it as well. So I thought that was a cool addition on there. People have asked for that over the years to be able to know what what filters have been applied on here. And it's not, especially report filters are just not that obvious. All right, so I recommend um, that the time be taken to set up a report template that can be used and reused by your organization over and over. Um, it took me, I don't know, a couple hours to set this up and um, it could easily be used then over. Notice also that I have the logo in there. You know, the whole formatting thing is set up as well. So that's one method. Um, then the other method for having, if we start a new report, um, what if we wanted the look of that report to look different? than the standard. So I'm just going to grab a few objects in here. Throw a table on there. All right. So I think it was uh, 4.2 SP five, maybe SP6, that they changed the default header. It used to be blue for many, many years. Um, when I first saw um, Webby, it had an orange, I mean a yellow background <laughs> to it with this dark blue. So it's, they've changed their template over the years. Um, the blue headers were wait, a long, long time, probably 12, years or longer. So they just recently um, changed that um, to this very light and more modern looking. I think it's a really faint <laughs> light gray. I, I would have liked a little bit darker, perhaps. But um, pardon? I it, Bold, I think I would be happy with that to make it bold. So what if you wanted that and you wanted all your reports to start off with a bold header? Okay, let's do that. Let's do that. So that's what we're going to talk about here. Bold, underline. bold and underline. <laughs> all right. So let me go back to my PowerPoints here. All right. So there's two at least two approaches that you could take with it. Um, what's cool is that they have now given us the ability to modify that CSS and not just the administrator. Um, the average Webby user um, actually don't know where these rights would be granted, but pretty much the average Webby user would have access to be able to get to that CSS sheet and apply it to their own reports, okay? Um, and then you could also apply it at a more corporate-wide level as well. That, of course, you would have to have access to the install file location to be able to put that um, CSS file there. But what's cool is that you could test this out on your own environment, I mean your own uh, reports first, and then once you got it looking really nice, then you could hand that over to the administrators to put up there and make it available for more users, for all users. And this actually, um, this is one thing I'm pretty sure has been available since 4.0. So I think you could actually do this. So, um, 
So the way to uh, get to this uh, screen is from the document properties. And we're going to walk through these steps in a minute, but um, I just wanted to point it out here. So from the in design mode, docu the properties and the document, um, when you click that up down there on the bottom is that little button that says change, what does it say? Default change default style. And then when you click on that button, this window pops up. This window has changed in the versions over 4.0, 4.1, and 4.2. It's changed a little bit, but not that much. Um, I saw um, information on this on Google that would have some of these older print screens, but you wouldn't have any trouble um, finding where you need to click here. So if you click on that export style, what that does is it gives you the CSS for that report that you had opened up. What confused me the first time that I um, looked into this is that I did some formatting on the report, say change the headers to blue and change the font to bold um, in the headers, and then clicked on export style, and I expected to see that in the <laughs> my exported CSS, but it, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> Not only that, but, um, okay, so exporting gives you the current CSS, and if this is the first time you're doing it, it would be the default CSS that um, comes with Webby. And if you apply to style, it would be that style that you applied. So this is the thing. Any formatting applied by the user isn't overwritten by this CSS. So when I went in there and changed the font to blue, uh, or sorry, the background to blue on the headers and the font to bold, and then exported the CSS. Not only did it not show up there, but when I changed that CSS and applied it to that document, my headers were still blue. Um, so, and that's because of this. So anything the user does manually doesn't get overwritten. So keep that in mind. All right. So let me show you an example here. So here's one where I actually do have blue headers and yellow font or white font, some other color. And I'm going to go into design mode and go into the properties here and document. And that opens up this document properties window. And down near the bottom is this change default style. So I'm going to import a style that I have set up previously, this new template test one. Say OK and close. And I can't get to my OK button. All right. So what, see my headers are the same. The change that I uh, made in that uh, particular template was I did make the headers a gold color. Um, so that wasn't overwritten. 